thank you for the uh, to the other two speakers and for the invita invitation. I will uh, try to um, make a compact talk uh, about um, cities and mapping and and questioning both. Um, what I will do is I will show three projects. I'll show an atlas that contains cities. I show an atlas that contains a single city, but in many maps, and then a very large map of very continuous cities. And then I will sprinkle that with some thoughts on maps. So my practice, I am a kind of designer with a practice in Amsterdam. Um, I also, a, as a teacher, I'm a, I'm a professor of artistic research in visual design at the Royal Danish Academy in Copenhagen. I'm also involved at the editorial design master uh, at Urbino, um, but my practice, uh, we are five at the moment. We are three women, two men. We are from Switzerland, France, and the, the Netherlands. Uh, our main output is books. We do books of uh, uh, art and design. We do pure textbooks like dictionaries and, and Bibles. Um, as part of our practice is kind of the use of visualizations, uh, especially maps and illustrations. Um, and um, we've been uh, working on several Atlas projects of which I will show two today. Uh, this one is a very recent one that came out a few months ago. It's a Atlas about port cities in uh, Europe. Uh, it shows 100 cities over divided of the of the four ports or four four uh, oceans there the baltic sea the north sea the atlantic and the mediterranean uh, this is a uh, book that kind of originated at the technical university delft it's, it's an academic publication um, with a lot of text um, but also uh, with uh, many maps that were all kind of designed uh, in our studio um, and also some infographics um, what you see is that we, what we try to do is we try to have different colors and different kind of materializations of the different uh, content. And one thing that we did is that we have different uh, colors, blue for the water, uh, different recipes for the for that blue. Um, and this is a typical page from the Atlas part uh, where you have on the right hand page a map and on the left hand page a uh, data looking at the port uh, the city and the territory uh, surrounding it and um, this is a kind of system that kind of uh, that should look very simple it's not simple to make um, but here are some pages and if we then zoom in then we see uh, here some info on on the, the the cargo what, what kind of, on, on the ship types on um, population structure um, and on the on the territory and and kind of the, the section of the land and then combined with a with a map uh, next to it that kind of uses similar kind of colors so that you can make that the, the map uh, becomes a legend to the data visualizations and and vice versa and here uh, a more complex one, where it's kind of a more complex situation, where it's a similar kind of approach. These maps are kind of printed. Uh, it's printed on in in four different inks. So there's a metallic blue. Uh, there's a kind of fluorescent yellow and a fluorescent uh, magenta and a black. Um, printed on two types of paper: on a matte coated paper and an uncoated paper. Um, and I think for for me um, these kind of port cities is a kind of a kind of um, a conflict or a kind of dialogue or a kind of conversation between on the one hand kind of nature landscape and uh, the human occupation and uh, economy and so on and we try to get materialize that through uh, the use of, of distinct sets of inks so then metallic blue is kind of used for the for the water uh, and then and also for the for the for the nature kind of uh, hatches and the fluorescent inks are used for the for the cities and for the ports um, and this is you really feel if you hold the, the book okay um, I think what you see here a bit is that we're kind of 
by not taking a singular approach to certain kind of types of content. In this case, the water, we are kind of also trying to always kind of investigate and question the map uh, while making it. Um, and that is something that um, has been talked about by se several theoreticians. I like very much like uh, what Johanna Drucker wrote about it, that she sees the maps as uh, intellectual Trojan horses from the empirical sciences that, that present content as as neutral as facts, but in fact, it's kind of a, it's an argument made in graphical form. Um, and I think it's interesting because she also offers a kind of a way out because this has not been the first one uh, who kind of who has kind of concluded that. And she kind of advocates for using ambiguity and uncertainty in the design of information to uh, to to question it and to to show that. I I think what we do in in my practice is that we kind of do we use we do it in two different ways. This kind of questioning that by uh, trying to avoid using a single form of representation, and then also by introducing uh, contradiction. I'm going to show that in a project about an about a single city, uh, Atlas of the Copenhagens. Uh, the, the the clue is in the last S. Um, the Atlas looks through. Uh, uh, the city of Copenhagen, or the or ask the question, what is the city of Copenhagen through six different le uh, lenses, uh, the, the formation level, how the city was built, demography, who's living there, the textures the sp and the spaces about uh, the architectural spaces and the, the public spaces that are there, uh, mobility, how people travel through that kind of city, and then the, the metabolism kind of chapter that looks at how this kind of city uh, is a kind of a living being and it kind of consumes and, and, uh, and, and waste, produces waste. And for all these kind of different chapters, we kind of created a different um, cartographic language from very traditional to more uh, data driven to uh, more illustrative uh, to uh, combinations of text and photography to um, focusing on on pure data, so to say, um, and to almost like an abstract kind of cartography. Uh, in these kind of cartographic languages, kind of we, we reference existing kind of cartographic uh, cartographies. This is kind of a, uh, refers to kind of a, a book from the late 1960s. Um, and uh, that's something that we kind of uh, incorporated uh, but we also try to explore new ways of, of, of map making. That's almost uh, uh, abstract. Yeah, so this is a bit complex, but what we uh, sense, what we try to do is that we try to, um, we try to also kind of question certain kind of aspects of the, of the Atlas, the, 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 the book as a kind of, as an authoritative medium. So here we question the completeness by, by using a specific binding, but almost like, Investigated if it should also could also be done differently, and and uh, the, the 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 spines of these small sections in the book have the title of the, of the chapters, also questioning the order of the book. Um, but we also do it again through the use of of specific inks that kind of highlight almost the the material material one to one quality, so that the, that the map is both a one to one physical object highlighted through this kind of hypermaterial kind of inks and as, as, as a kind of representation of an object in scale. And these inks are also used to um, for photographs. Uh, so that's also a mix of this specific ink. So then you get this really nice um, kind of images that are somewhere between a photographic image and then a kind of data image. Uh, yeah, so the, the maybe to, to say a bit more about the origins of this book, this kind of originated at a uh, Department of Urbanism and Societal Change at the Royal Danish Academy. Um, started by as a student project, as a workshop that somehow, uh, and then seven years later we had a book. Um, and it was kind of with tutors of the, the of the department and, uh, and and in my studio that was kind of then further developed into uh, this uh, this atlas. Um, yeah. 
I'll think I'll go to the next project already, which is a map, a map of uh, that was kind of exhibited at the uh, architecture biennial in, in Venice. Um, if you think of cities and they look like this, that that, that uh, the, the thinking about uh, cities kind of um, almost kind of suggests a certain kind of cartographic or representational approach. And for this uh, uh, kind of city, um, that is very different than for this kind of city, which is maybe more complex than the city that we saw below before, kind of New York City. This is uh, Flanders, so that's kind of the, the northern part of Belgium, that's the Dutch speaking part of Belgium. And um, some 10 years ago, I was part of the, uh, the team uh, looking at the, the territory of that of Flanders and, and how to kind of map and remap this kind of... Uh, it. So I think, why, why is this such a kind of complex image? Because here what you see is food production, recreation, dwelling, infrastructure, offices, all in one kind of space, completely unsegregated, one big soup of urban uh, or, uh, functions. If you would look at the map of this area, then you see this, and then you and I think you get again the wrong impression because what you see here is a, a network of larger cities connected by roads uh, with some smaller cities in between. But if you go out there, you see this. You see this kind of continuous soup of nothingness. So how do you make a map of nothing, basically? Um, I. For then of this map, this kind of a painting of Gerhard Richter, uh, photographic, based on kind of a photo aerial photograph of the city of Frankfurt. And what was interesting about this, because I think you recognize it from a kind of distance, but if you come close, you only see this. You only see paint. You see violence of the of the of, of white and black paint um, competing. So I thought that we we took it as a kind of strategy. In my studio to make a kind of similar map. So uh, this is a kind of early sketch where we try to find a kind of uh, mapping approach that is um, uh, looks from a distance, uh, depending on where you kind of see it, you it, it shows a different thing. So from a distance, it looks pixelated, it looks like a data map. But if you come close, it becomes very almost illustrative. Um, so this, this we wanted to play with these kind of two proximities so that also by where you are kind of seeing this map, it will tell a different kind of story. So we took a one to 2000 scale, a 50 by 50 meter kind of grid, and we started kind of to draw different layers from, uh, from a GIS uh, map that we kind of used. And then started kind of uh, layering this, and this became uh, then uh, the map. And here we are at the Giardini in Venice, where the kind of the, uh, the map is shown, here you see it. It's um, um, six by three meters, um, and it looks uh, pixelated from a distance. And we deliberately uh, put it almost as wallpaper, and then had the doors incorporated in the map so that you had to uh, you were kind of forced to incorporate it. And some people did; they really approach it from very close. Not everyone. Um, uh, yeah, so it was. It is a. It was a. It's actually a, a, in terms of colors, uh, it's very much focused on the on sort of kind of data category. So we made a distinction between uh, red cows uh, and uh, orange horses. Uh, that kind of shows kind of the um, meadows where uh, fields where they kind of were used for food production, uh, hence the cows or foods used by uh, girls with horses, so like rec recreation. And, and by using certain kind of types of colors, we kind of made that kind of clear. So here you see some uh, uh, detail of that uh, map. So I, I started to make this kind of talk, so by, by, by having this claim that we are making and questioning maps at the same time. And that's what we do. Eh? So what we what we try to do in different ways. So if you see, you think of the map as a kind of cropped 
bit of uh, reality, then we are kind of questioning the crop by deliberately uh, leaving holes in it, by leaving, leaving information out, uh, questioning the completeness of the map, or by having the, um, the crop of the map coincide with the kind of the, the, the page size so that the, the cutting of the paper is the cutting of the, of the map. Um, and then we do that here also on the right hand page. Um, I think scale is always an issue uh, when we do it. So that's kind of the relationship between the awareness that we have about a uh, observer or a reader, a user who kind of has a kind of physical relationship with the, the, the map, uh, either by making it very big or by using inks that kind of emphasize the kind of the, the, the one to one quality of, of the map. Um, and also the notion of the of the legend, the map legend, the kind of the generalization of 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 uh, we also question by either not providing a legend and and just have a kind of a, 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 a illustrative uh, layer that uh, legend that somehow you have to kind of find out for yourself what it is by uh, not having a single representation but by different. Uh, types of representation um, and or by not um, not doing the generalization and having different colors in this case for the four different uh, oceans of of Europe. <laughs>